but I'm also live on Facebook and also on um, YouTube at Hope FM Live is where to get me. And uh, we are in the book of Exodus chapter 12, the book of Exodus chapter 12. And also we are going to be in the book of um the book of um what is this called the book of isaiah chapter 54 that isaiah 54 is the scripture right there that i'm talking about but let's start with the book of exodus 12 now i'm going to read in portions so if you have your bible and are tracking with me you're going to notice i'm going to be skipping some certain scriptures here and there just to get to where i want to be at now the lord spoke to moses and aaron in the land of egypt saying this month shall be your beginning of months it shall be the first month of the year to to you speak to all the congregants of israel saying on the tenth of this month every man shall take for himself a lamb according to the house of his father a lamb for a household and if the household is too small for the lamb let them uh, and his neighbor you know be able to uh, to share a man according to each uh, each man's needs you shall make your count for the lamb your lamb shall not shall be without blemish and there are instructions there and then the word of god says and they shall take some of the blood verse 7 they shall take some of the blood and put it on two doorposts and on the lintel of the houses where they they eat it then they shall eat the flesh on that night, roasted in fire and leavened. You shall let none of it remain until morning. What remains of it until morning, you shall burn with fire. So, the word of God says, And thus you shall eat it with a belt on your waist. That is being ready. You shall eat it with a belt on your waist, with your sandals on your feet, and with your staff on in your hand, so that you shall eat in haste. It is the Lord's Passover. It's an interesting scripture there and uh, just reminded me of school uh, in high school how we used to be asked why were they eating with their belts on and their sandals on their feet and why were they ready when they were eating. Then verse 12 says, For I will pass through the land of Egypt on the night and will strike all the firstborn in the land of Egypt, both man and beast, and against all the gods of Egypt, I will execute judgment. I am the Lord. Now the blood shall be a sign for you on the houses where you are. And when I see the blood, I will pass over and the plague shall not be on, on, on you to destroy you when I strike the land of Egypt. So this day shall be to you a memorial and you shall keep it at, as a feast to the Lord throughout your generation. And so Moses 21 called for all the elders of Israel and said, pick out and take lambs for yourselves. And they did according to what God had uh, was saying that you shall say it is the Passover sacrifice of the Lord who passed over the houses of the children of Israel in Egypt when he struck the Egyptians and delivered our household. So the people bowed their heads and worshipped. Then the children of Israel went away and did so, just as the Lord had commanded Moses and Aaron. 29. And it came to pass at midnight that the Lord struck all the firstborn in the land of Egypt, from the firstborn of Pharaoh, who sat on his throne, to the firstborn of the captive, who was in the dungeon, and all the firstborn's livestock. And then Pharaoh, he called for Moses and Aaron by night and said, Rise, go out from among my people, both you and the children of Israel, and go serve the Lord as you have said. And also take your flock and your herds as you have said, and be gone, and bless me also. And the Egyptians urged the people that they may send them out of the land in haste. It was a quick sending, like, just go, leave us. The book of Isaiah 54 verse 2 says, Enlarge the place of your tent and let them stretch out the curtains of your dwellings. Do not spare. Lengthen your cords and strengthen your stakes, for you shall expand to the right and to the left, and your descendants will inherit the nations. The word of God saying, enlarge the place of your your tents and let them stretch out the curtains of your dwellings and as as uh, do not spare lengthen your cords for you shall expand to the right and to the and to the left and the word of god as i was just reading the word of god i realized that you know for certain things in fact for all things it's very important that you and i make room because the blessing is truly coming and this story about the children of israel this was the last plague 
And I was just looking at their story and I was just, I mean, trying to remember the entire um, process where there was the first plague, there was the second, there was the third. And then when we're reading the book of Exodus 12, we are in the 10th plague. And even in the 10th plague, it's interesting that they still have faith in God. They still have confidence in God because I was, you know, for, for people that uh, are going to be rescued from a place of bondage, you'd expect that, you know, when they cried to God, they, they were crying to God and said, send deliverance because they were suffering in bondage. And you would expect that because of the plagues coming, day one, day two, they would get so used and they would be sure that nothing is ever going to come forth. It's like these plagues look like a joke. They look like you know, it's, they are miraculous, yes, but none of them has produced so far. None of them has happened to a point where we can say, now we are leaving Egypt or now we are leaving bondage. And so, and in fact, the first time that Moses appeared to free them by the word of God, the word of God says that the, the, tasks, the taskmasters, they added even more labor. See, these people, it seems like they are idle and that's why they have time to talk about freedom and, and live in bondage. And so it actually worsened. So for them to get to the 10th plague and God is giving instructions and he's saying, now you kill lambs. And after you do that, spread that blood on your doorposts, you know, because an angel of light, an angel of life and death is going to be, an angel of death is going to be visiting. And every place that there's not smeared the blood, then there's going to be death of a firstborn. And I'm looking at them being told, God telling Moses what to do, and Moses calling the elders and the, and, and the children of God, and they listen, and they not only listen, but they execute. Something within their hearts was telling them, God is going to save us. Something with even you right now, you could be in a place you're, it's very tight, it's very hard, but there's a conviction that always tells you, you know what, God is going to come through. God is going to rescue me. God is going to do a work in my life. That affirmation is what made them endure the first plague, second, third, until on the tenth time where they are supposed to work with God. Isn't it amazing that all the ninth, uh, nine plagues, they never were working with God. But on the tenth one, God needed their cooperation. It's very important that you mature in, in Christ and in the things of God to know where, where you're supposed to come in as a co-worker together with Christ Jesus. And so on this 10th one, their cooperation was needed because they needed to be ready, not just in how they dressed, but they needed to smear blood on their doorposts because an angel was going to be moving around and that Passover was going to be a very important celebration that would be marked from that day to continue. And I'm here to encourage you that God is bringing you into a season of deliverance. I'm here to affirm to you that that voice you've been hearing is the voice of God. And this morning, what is God saying? God is saying, stretch your place of dwelling because he is now working with your faith. He needs to work with your faith. And he needs you to understand and believe in your heart that truly he's coming. And he needs you to make room for that expansion. And he says, enlarge the place of your tents and let them stretch out the curtains of your dwellings. Because God is going to expand you to the right and to the left. The word of God says, the them that expect of God, the expectations of the righteous, that shall not be cut off. So now you're making room. Now you're stretching your faith. Now you're believing God. Because he's coming to deliver. And this morning he has reminded us in his word, the book of Psalms 66, he has reminded us that he surely listened. That prayer that you made for him to deliver you. Everything that you've been seeing has been working together, leading towards the miracle. Everything that God said to you, that he said, I will progress your career. I will promote you. I will lift you. Everything that you have been seeing. And that's why we're saying we are grateful for the affliction. Everything that you have been seeing has been a sequence that God has been using. 
whether the devil put it out there or whether it is God himself, God has been using, he has a way of using things. What you meant for evil, God used for good. God has a way. And so everything is working in a sequence leading to this 10th plague that is supposed to cause you to walk in freedom. But there's a place for you to do and there's a role for you to play. You need to enlarge. You need to prepare for that blessing. You need to make room for that blessing. Hannah said to God, God, give me a son and I will give that son back to you. Making room for the blessing, preparing for that blessing. God, do this for me because I will, uh, she, she said it and God blessed her with a son. And it's interesting because God really needed that son. Hmm. God really needed that son to use as a voice in the nation of Israel. Sometimes you think the miracle is just for you, but God needs that miracle for the greater good. God is using something. God used Joseph in the tribulations and the sufferings he went through. He used him not just to elevate him for him to feel good, but he used him for an entire sustenance of his people. God was freeing the children of Israel, not for them to just be free, but he needed people to worship him. And that's why he kept saying, let my people go so that they can worship the Lord. They can go and worship God freely. God is setting you free and God is going to answer you because he needs your service. He needs the miracle that he's given you for his kingdom. And so it's always about the bigger picture for God. But I'm here to tell you, make room because the blessing is coming. Make room because certainly the promises of God over your life will be fulfilled. Make room this morning. Begin to be expectant. Stop the negativity. Stop the faithlessness. Stop the hopelessness. You know, feeling like you're about to backslide, feeling like nothing is going to work for you. No, stop that. God wants you to be expectant because that expectation, it shall not be cut off. It is not unto shame. The Lord will free you. You will walk into that blessing. There is a promised land for you and God is leading you right into it. And so don't you despair. Instead, begin to make room because the blessing 